Hi everyone, it's Amanda Matice, one of your Heckman librarians with another tip video on scholarly reading. This time we're looking at monographs, which in the scholarly world refers to books. Now there is a bit of a difference between reading a popular book and reading a scholarly book like a monograph. If you've seen our Research 101 lesson on types of sources, you'll know that popular books like novels are written for a wider audience, mostly for entertainment, whereas scholarly books are written for an academic audience, mostly to educate. Monographs specifically fall into this later category, and they're usually providing a very detailed look at a specialized study or an aspect of a subject. They can be pretty dense and technical reading, but just like scholarly articles, they also follow some predictable patterns in how they're organized, which we can use to our advantage. Here are a few tips and things to look out for when reading a scholarly book or monograph. First, you can always find publication information in a scholarly book on the mostly blank pages at the very beginning. These are the details you'll need to create a citation later like who the publisher is and when it was published, perhaps what edition it is, and more. Second, most scholarly books also have a table of contents at the front, where they outline their chapters and sometimes also their figures or pictures or data. This can give you a clue about the content of the book overall and help you find the most relevant information for you at a glance. After all, you may only be interested in a part of this topic, so if you don't have time to read everything, you can jump to a chapter that interests you and start there. Additionally, it may be useful to skim the introduction and conclusion in a text like this to get an overview of the context, main ideas, and major takeaways. Try taking notes in these most relevant chapters to capture what you're thinking as you read. Impactful quotes or important ideas, your questions and connections to other readings, etc. It will help you figure out what you've learned so far and what you still need to learn for your research. Many scholarly books also have useful tools at the end that can help you navigate the text, like perhaps a glossary or an index. Glossaries contain definitions of important terms used by the authors, and an index is like a map for those terms, showing you on which exact pages those words popped up. That can be another really useful way to find a particular subtopic you're interested in within the book and save some time in your reading. Finally, you should see references or bibliographies either at the end of the monograph or sometimes at the end of each chapter. In a book like this, this list of sources can be quite extensive, which is great in two ways. It gives you a sense of the monograph's scholarly authority by showing a lot of expertise and evidence it has drawn from, and it gives you possible other sources you can look up and use in your own research. So next time you have some scholarly books or monographs to look through, I hope you find these tips helpful. These are just some general pointers though, so don't hesitate to ask a librarian like me for more advice on your specific assignments and readings. 